Hey everyone, Brandon from Top 10 Gamer again. Today we're going to take a look at a $300 gaming PC build, which is pretty exciting because it's the first of 10 builds we're going to not only look at, but eventually put together and do testing on for FPS. So you know I'm completely independent and not sponsored as of yet. So this is really what I think, guys. I'm really trying to find the best budget answer for every gamer out there, whether it's $1,500 or $300. And I'm going to put my money where my mouth is because I'm taking this money out of my own pocket. I'm taking a little bit of risk. Sure, I'm going to go resell these PCs again, but you know I might not recover all of the cost. But I'm willing to do that for the channel. I want to do that for you guys, and I want to see real real world results. Not only that, it sounds like a bunch of fun. So here's how it's going to go down. After each one of these videos, I'm going to really need your feedback. Uh, I usually leave a write up in the description below. That includes this particular video where you can go vote for what you think. And I also need help in the comment description below with, uh, with any feedback that you have. You can also go to facebook.com slash top 10 gamer to leave me feedback or if you're trying to build a PC like this right now and have a question. Okay, so let's jump into the first build. This build will feature an APU. Now, if you don't know what an APU is, that's just an accelerated processing unit that combines basically a dedicated graphics card with a processor. Now, these units are from AMD. And since 2011, AMD's already released four in this line. In 2011, we had Lano. 2012, we had Trinity. 2013, we had Richland. And in 2014, we have Kaveri. Now, all of these are pretty good budget options, but since every release has come out, you can get some of the earlier models for cheap. Now, for this particular build, we have a budget of about $100 for both the CPU and graphics card. It doesn't seem like a lot, right? But we can afford the AMD A10 5800K. This is the Trinity model from back in 2012. Or we can spend a little bit more money. For $120, we can get the A8 7600 Kaveri model, which will give us better graphics, but is not quite as good of a processor. So those are your two choices for APU. Either one will allow you to play today's latest games in 1080p if you lower the settings. And you can always, if you're having trouble, you can always go to sound to 720p. That's not a terrible experience as well. I have some pro gamer buddies who have awesome gaming rigs that actually play in 720p just for the crazy FPS that you can get out of them. This computer is perfect for gamers who are looking to play really popular games like Minecraft or League of Legends, Dota 2, uh, wow, anything like that, you're going to be able to play in 1080p with full settings and it should do a great job. Now, on to the motherboards. Now, depending on what APU you choose, you might want to change what motherboard you purchase, but I'm going to recommend you purchase an FM2 Plus motherboard because it's the most recent and they're really not that much more expensive. In fact, if you can find a rebate, you can get it just as cheap as the original motherboards which were released for AMD's APUs. Now, how does this work? Okay, so just a quick rundown of sockets along with the APU that AMD has released. Back in 2011, we got Lano, and we were all hoping that this socket would last more than one generation. But Socket FM1 only works with Lano. Now, Socket FM2 works with 2012 and 2013's models in Trinity and Richland. And now, in 2014, we have Socket FM2+. Plus. FM2+, Plus will work with the past three generations, that's Trinity, Richland and Kaveri and will also if you use a Kaveri APU have support for PCI Express 3.0. All of these reasons are why I recommend you going with an FM2 Plus motherboard. The particular motherboard I'm going to recommend for this month it can change by the time I go to build this PC and it can change by the time that you may build your PC here in a week or two. Now I'm not sure exactly when we'll have this build done but it should be within a few months so uh, if you want to wait out, wait it out and stick it out, you can see that. But there's also some really good benchmarks for both of the APUs that I mentioned that uh, can at least give you a pretty good idea of the FPS. Okay, so the motherboard I'm going with is the Gigabyte GAF2A75M-HD2. Wow, that's a mouthful, right? They always are. I don't know why they do this to us. Let's come up with some like good naming schemes that are easy to remember here. But if you go with the revision 3.0, then you get the black version of this motherboard. If you go with like revision 1.2, you get the, in my opinion, not as aesthetically pleasing blue version of this motherboard. So 
look for revision 3.0 this motherboard should have everything you need in a micro ATX board and it'll support um, it'll support the not, not only the APU but uh, dual graphics mode so see with the APU uh, this generation of APU if you go with a Kaveri APU then you can also couple that with an R7 240 or 250 graphics card and run it in dual graphics mode to get additional performance now of course you wouldn't want to plan doing that out of the gate because there are better options than purchasing purchasing an APU for a hundred or hundred and twenty dollars and purchasing an additional graphics card for eighty dollars now you'd be much better off in that scenario buying something like the F FX 6300 along with uh, with a dedicated graphics card that being said it's good to know years down the road if you're lacking in the graphics department you can always buy the R7 240 or R7 R7 then when they're even cheaper and upgrade your uh, your computer substantially on what it can handle okay for RAM we've only got about 50 bucks for RAM and in fact we're gonna spend 40 we're gonna get the Kingston HyperX 4 gigabytes a 1600 megahertz version uh, you know it'd be nice if we get the 8 gigabytes as you can buy that for $70 that saves you about 10 bucks if, if you can do that you can spend $30 more on this particular build in fact when I actually go to build this PC that's that may be what I do because I know everybody's looking for 8 gigabytes of RAM but think about what this computer is meant to do it's meant to turn the settings down on 1080p it's meant, like they did for Xbox one and uh, the PS4 by the way it's meant to turn the settings down and then you don't need as much RAM anyway so I think you'll probably be fine with four gigabytes of RAM especially if you're playing uh, the three games I mentioned before Minecraft League of Legends or Dota 2 and you can always add RAM in the future if it's not enough or maybe you even already have some RAM lying around so we're just trying to save money here and stay within our budget okay for power supply we're gonna go with the CX430 right now there's a $20 rebate out uh, at newegg.com that makes this about 25 bucks that's a steal it's all the power you need for this build and it's 80 plus you want to go with an 80 plus certified power supply I don't care if you can find a power supply for five bucks that'll run this PC it's not worth it because over time the power the extra power that your PC will consume by not being efficient is gonna just make it so that you spend more money over time and in general uh, power supplies that are certified are just better quality overall for case we're going to go with a cheap two fan micro ATX form factor case in the Rosewell FBM 01 or 02 I prefer the second generation one better as far as its looks and where the USB ports are located but either one should be fine these are normally $29.99 but if they go on sale sometimes you can even find them for $19.99 now we've got about 50 bucks left and so I'm going to recommend you buy the Western Digital 500 gigabyte the blue version hard drive these are usually around fifty dollars fifty five dollars and if you already have a hard drive lying around then you can also consider putting this money towards an APU a better CPU uh, graphics card combo or whatever you want to do but that's a real world world example of where budgets get in the way of what you guys may already have but of course I can't account for all of that now one other thing I want to mention here is even if you don't have a hard drive another consideration if you're willing to manage the space on your computer I know this is going to stretch you thin a little bit but there's a Samsung 840 available for about $85 that you can install your OS on and still have enough room for many of your favorite games now why would you do this well because really it would make the machine faster overall and if you're willing to install and uninstall programs like we used to do in the past then you can really have a much better machine a faster machine for just about the same price okay that's all I have for you today in the description area below there's all kinds of useful links there's the write-up for this particular video there's a link to all the parts and where you can buy them there's links to real world FPS examples for what you can expect depending on which APU you go with. And hopefully, this helps you guys out a lot. Again, I'd love your feedback in the comments section below. Follow me at facebook.com slash top 10 gamer. Let's have a discussion about PC building. Uh, hopefully, you guys are also excited about the potential of an OS like the Steam OS coming up. Uh, for this particular build, the $300 PC build, I'm planning to run SteamOS on it first. Check and see what kind of FPS I can get out of SteamOS compatible games like Dota 2 
and then run Windows 8 and see what I get in comparison. So anyway, hopefully that'll help you out. Hopefully you guys also like videos like this. If you do, you can help me out by pressing that like and subscribe button. The more subscribers that we have for the channel, the bigger and badder things that we can do. So that does help me out quite a bit. Uh, hopefully you guys will stick around for the next video and we'll see you next time. Thank you.